Hi, it's Miss Tracy from the Hoover Public Library. And today, for a Try This at Home, we're going to be doing Fairy Tale Steam. We're going to be doing some activities related to fairy tales in the areas of science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. So let's get started. You probably remember that when Jack traveled up the beanstalk, he took a few things from the giant, and one of those things was a magical harp. Now a harp, unlike a guitar, has strings that are all the same thickness. So then, how does a harp make different sounds? How do you get different pitches? Well, we're going to do an experiment to find out, but first we need to understand what sound is. Sound is energy that is caused by something moving backwards and forwards like vibrations along a harp's string. So, knowing that, what we need for the experiment is a box, one rubber band, and a couple of pens or pencils. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the pencils under the rubber band at a certain distance. Now, this, the vibration only has to travel from here to here, so let's see what sound we get when we move the string, or in this case, the rubber band. Can you hear that? That sounds pretty high in pitch, right? Now, let's move this pencil down a bit. And so now, this represents a wire that is a little longer, and the vibration has farther to travel. Can you hear a difference? Yeah, that sounds deeper, right? You get a, deep, a deeper pick, pitch. And if we move it even more, I think we should get an even deeper pitch. Let's see. We did. All right, and I'm going to move it all the way down here. And this would represent the longest string on a harp because look how far the vibration has to travel. Uh, do, you hear, do you hear how deep that pitch is? Yeah. So what have we learned? Basically, we've learned that you get different sounds from different strings because of their length and how far the vibrations have to travel. Now, if you want to duplicate this experiment at home, remember, all you need is a box, a rubber band, and a couple pens or pencils. Technology. Use the link included in this post to check out fun websites and apps. So, for the engineering challenge, I want to challenge you to build a bridge, like the bridge that the three Billy Goats had to cross in the three Billy Goats Gruff. Now, this bridge needs to be sturdy because we don't want the goats to fall down and get eaten by the troll, right? So, to test our bridge, we are going to see if it can hold 100 pennies. And here are the materials that I chose to use. Um, so, I use straws. If you have straws at home that are bendy, you can use those as well as the straight. I just didn't have those. I used tape to hold everything together. I used note cards. And I wanted to use paper clips, but I didn't have any. But I did have these cute little mini clothes pins that filled in for paper clips. All right, and so let me show you the first bridge that I built. It looks like this, and I thought it looked pretty strong. Um, let me put it right here so you can see it better. Now, but when I put 100 pennies on it, that's what happened. So we don't want the goats to cross on that bridge because they will most certainly be eaten by the troll. So I designed another bridge. So I made some adjustments. As you can tell, my straws are a little shorter. And I just want to give you a hint that when you are building things, just remember that a triangle is the strongest shape. All right? Now, we're going to do the 100 penny challenge. Is this bridge strong enough to hold up three billy goats? I think it is. So, when you try this at home, 
you need to challenge your family. And you guys don't have to use the same materials, but just to decide up front which materials you're going to use, that everybody is limited to that. And then you can find out whose bridge the billy goats should use to cross. All right, let's make a spiral beanstalk. Here's what you'll need. Green paper, a marker or a pencil. You'll need a pair of scissors, some glue, some cotton balls, some type of string. I've got fishing line right here. And then something to make a tiny, tiny hole for the string to go through. I'm just going to use this thumbtack right here. All right, let's get started. And when you're finished, you'll have a theme stock to hang in your room. Okay, let's make a blotto troll. We want to make a troll like the one from the Three Billy Goats truck. What we're going to need is some paper, scissors, some scraps of paper in different colors, and some paint. Now my paint is in such large containers, I don't want it to come out so quickly, so I'm going to pour a little bit of paint into bottle caps. So that's not a step that you have to do. But if your paint containers are large, you might want to. All right, let's get started.
and you might want to try this several different times because as you can see, you're going to get something different every time. For math, we're going to play a game called Pig in honor of the three little pigs. Now all you need for this game is one die and you're also going to need a piece of paper and a pen to make a score sheet. Let's get started. The object of the game is to be the first player to reach 100. And this is the way you play. On a turn, a player can roll repeatedly until one of two things happens. One, the player rolls a one, or two, the player chooses to hold, which means stop rolling. Each number rolled is added to the player's total. But if a one is rolled, all points for that turn are lost. For this game, Piggy is going to play against BB Wolf. Piggy goes first. She rolls a 4, a 2, and a 5 for a total of 11 points. Piggy stops so she gets to keep all her points. Now it's Wolf's turn. He rolls a 5, a 2, and uh oh, a 1. He rolled a 1 so Wolf gets no points for this turn. Wolf and Piggy will continue playing in this way until one of them reaches 100. 